Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we're going to be going over how to use the clone tool in GIMP. So as you can see here, I have a drone shot that I took and while I like the shot, uh, this was my first time droning and I actually hadn't used my drone before and I found myself in the shot right here. Don't want myself in the shot to be honest. So let's go ahead and fix that issue. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, the, the first thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and add in a new layer here. And I just want to keep everything the same. And I just want to make sure that the fill width is set to transparency. Now we did this a few tutorials ago where we went ahead and selected the clone stamp tool by pushing C on our keyboard. And then we went into the tool options and came down here to sample merged. Now if I long press here, you can see that there's three different types of clone tools. There's the clone tool, the perspective clone, and then the heel. The perspective clone tool, of course, is for if you want to clone something that is, that is in perspective. The clone tool just allows you to grab one part of your image and then copy that over another part of your image. The heel tool actually looks around where you have copied it tries to match the brightness or darkness of the place that you're copying to. So let me let me demonstrate that first. I'm going to select the clone tool and you can see my brush is quite large so I'm going to bring that down here to something a little more manageable and then holding control and zooming my mouse wheel in I'm going to go ahead and grab right here in the dark and control click to tell the clone brush my source copy area. Now I can brush right here and actually what I've done is I've taken this area from my brush and then I've brushed it here on top of things so you can see a little bit better. Uh, we can also see that my force is quite low so if I turn that up to 100 and then try that again you can see that um, I've gone ahead and painted this area right here. Now I can paint over here in the light and you can see that this is too dark but if I go ahead and grab the heel brush and I select over here in the darkness and then go ahead and try and clone here in the in the bright part of the image you can see that the heel brush has gone ahead and automatically tried to adjust some settings to give me a better result so you need to figure out what you're trying to do now the heel brush the drawback of the heel brush is the automation sometimes when you're trying to clone something the heel brush will grab other elements like if I put my heel brush right here so you can see here if I go ahead and paint near the shadow, uh, the shadow actually is causing the heel brush to change the brightness of what I'm painting. And that um, is not right because the shadow is a hard line. So that this is an area where I would rather use the clone brush outside instead of the heel brush. Anyway, I'm just going to hit control A to select everything in my image and then delete to delete it and then control shift A to deselect everything. So now that we've gone through that little explanation, let's go ahead and come over here. And you can see it was a bright sunny day. So I'm going to start off with the clone brush. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to make sure I really delete myself from this image. And even before I do that, I'm going to hit F on my keyboard and go ahead and control mouse wheel zoom in and what I want to do is I want to go ahead and, and define an area so I'm going to go ahead and define this area and the reason that I've done that is because I don't want to accidentally brush over this line and delete that but now only everything that I clone so let me go ahead and grab my clone brush and grab this area you can see when I paint inside of my selection this line is kept as nice and crisp okay so I'm going to go ahead and hit control Z and what I want to do is I want to try and grab an area from the image that is roughly in the same, I want to say longitudinal, up and down, vertical line. That's going to give me about the same shade. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this area right up here and just go ahead and start painting myself out. I can kind of grab some different areas. Okay, so I've painted myself out, but now we have another issue, which is where I grabbed from had kind of a tan hue to it. So I'm going to zoom back in and I'm just zooming in and out by holding control and pushing my middle mouse button and then pushing my mouse in and out. 
And this is where I'm actually going to use the healing tool. Now that I've done the big broad strokes, gotten rid of myself, I'm going to grab right here and kind of just work on what I'm really trying to do. I'm just grabbing areas from different parts of the image because I don't want this to be too uniform. If it's too uniform, then it's very clear that an edit has been applied to this image. Okay, so I think that that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hit Control Shift A, and I'm gonna zoom out hitting Control Shift J, and we can see. Now we know where to look, but if you were just looking at this image, you wouldn't, your eye is not drawn to that particular spot and go, oh man, something's been erased. So I can turn off my new layer, on, off, on, okay? And last but not least, let's just go ahead and, and do some final adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate both of my layers, Control shift d on my top layer and Control shift d on the bottom layer. And then I'm going to move that bottom layer up one so that I have two kind of two sets of layers. And then I'm going to right click and go down to merge down and turn those two off. Now I have one layer with everything applied to it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, this was taken with a drone. Drones have incredibly wide field of view. I'm going to add some filters to get rid of some of this distortion. So go here to Filter, Distorts, and Lens Distortion. So now if I increase the main, you can see that I am distorting outward. Uh, if I increase this a lot, it's kind of like a mirror ball effect. If I come back, I, I get the opposite. So um, you know, I think something, uh, something about like that, maybe a negative 6.4 for me. Uh, that might even be too much. What if we, oops, what if we went to a negative five? Okay, I like that. So now that I've taken care of that lens distortion, I'm gonna hit Shift C to grab my crop tool. And then I'm going to control scroll wheel out a little bit. So I have my entire image. I know that this image is a 3000 by 4000 pixel image. So I'm going to take the fixed aspect ratio and type in 3 colon 4, turn on the fixed and make sure that it's set to aspect ratio. Now, oh, it needs to be the other way around. Whoops. So 4 colon 3, enter. There you go. I want to keep the same aspect ratio of this image, but this is slightly off center. So I'm going to zoom this in a little bit until the bottom edge of my crop area has touched the bottom edge of the building. And then I'm going to zoom this one in again as well. And now we can see a little bit easier. And then to move this, I can just grab in the center, just mouse click and, and drag and center the building there. And then I can increase the size. And if I grab one corner and pull out, that's great. If I hit control, I can actually resize my crop area from the center. So I can just Go ahead and do that and then hit enter and I've gone ahead and cropped out the extra area and then last but not least is hit shift T and just give this the slightest bit little rotation and then scale it up just a little bit to make sure I don't have any open space there now that we've done that let's go ahead and come here to colors and I'm gonna come to color balance this time around so we have our midtones, highlights, and shadows. Let's go ahead and go into the shadows and just increase the yellow, uh, decrease the yellow, oh, increase the yellow. Let's come into the highlights. Let's go ahead and increase the cyan. Let's leave the midtones where they are. The reason that I've just gone ahead and increased one and decreased the other is I'm trying to create some contrast there and give this a, a kind of a Instagram filter look. Of course, I've increased this too much, so I'm going to bring the cyan back a little bit and the yellow, okay, something like that is good for me. Click OK. So now I'm going to come up to the colors and the hue saturation and go ahead and grab the green and increase the saturation on the green. If I increase it a lot, you can end up with some funky effects, so you don't want too much. Increase the green and the yellow saturation because green and yellow are just so close. You can see as I increase the yellow, I increase it a lot, those trees really start to pop. So 
but they're popping a little too much. Okay, something like that. And then finally, um, one thing I like to do is come here to the hue, chroma, and lightness. And the chroma, if used right, can act kind of like a vibrant slider. So I like to use chroma a little bit. Okay. And then finally, let's come here and do some lasting little exposure edits. Increase the black level just a little bit. And increase the exposure just a, just a hair. Okay, so let's look at what we had. This is what we had when we started out. This is what we have now. You can see I'm there, and now I am not. So I hope that this has been helpful to you. If it has, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.